Can you believe I slept through my alarm clock on such an important day? Typical. Today we're visiting the renowned glassmaking studio called Urban Glass. It's in Brooklyn, New York, and I'm running late. Ever since I received an invitation to bring my class into their studio, I've had almost nothing else on my mind. Glass is nearly inescapable in our daily lives. Optical glass is in our cameras, telescopes, and the corrective lenses of bifocals. We make scientific equipment out of glass. We use it to hold our beverages, both hot and cold. When constructing a building, it's used to make windows and doors. But how you manipulate this material artistically is something of a mystery to me. Well, that's about to change. Hey Malcolm, hey Kate, sorry I'm late. Did I miss the demo? Nope, we're just getting started. Hi everyone, my name is Malcolm and welcome to Urban Glass. Today we'll be doing a short glass blowing demonstration for you. So I will show you kind of the basics of making a cup. This is a gathering rod. When the tip is blowing, kind of that dull cherry, it's around 1,000 degrees. This is our furnace. This holds about 450 pounds of molten glass at any given time. While it's this temperature, I can cut it and you can pull it. Similar pipe, but this one is hollow. Um, it's got a hole all the way through it. Stainless steel mouthpiece. As you trap the air in the pipe, it's going to start to heat up. And keep a lot, as much of this glass in the bottom as I can. And to get this off the pipe, we're going to need to put a constriction in it. Put a line up at the top. This constriction line up here will allow me to separate from this from the pipe. Ideally, you have something that is thinner than the pipe that you're working on. A lot of glass blowing is really about heat management and less about the exact tool placement. We're going to connect a little bit of glass to the bottom of here, break the glass off here, then we'll have access to the top of this piece so we can open it, shape it up, make it a little bit bigger, make it drinkable. I'm going to take a little bit of water, put it right on that neckline, give that just the tiniest tap. Kate has a puffing tool right there. I'm going to stick it into the front, blow it up. And that's just going to allow me to shape the top of it a little bit more easily. I can put a little bit of water up there. And then if I just give this one tap, it comes right off. I can torch and then flatten it right there. And that's gonna go away in the box. So when we're done making a piece, it's still around 1,000 degrees, but to get it from there down to room temperature, you have to ramp really slowly. Hey Anna, could you show me some of the basic equipment here? Yeah, totally. So, first things first, you're gonna make sure that whenever we're working with the glass directly in the flame, that you wear these didymium glasses. Uh -huh. um, they protect you from the sodium flare coming off of the flame and protect your eyes from too much damage as you work with the glass over time. Great. So if you wanna wear those, um, I'll go through these tools step by step. So these right here are called nippers or glass cutters or glass scorers. They can be used to cut the glass. As you can see, you can just pick them up come in and just slightly touch down and nicely cut. This tool does the, essentially the same thing. Um, next we have our metal stainless steel tweezers. There's a couple pairs or a few different pairs down here. Um, start with the mashers. These can help you push the glass down and make flat shapes. Um, these are the smooth tweezers or the needle nose tweezers. These can be used to pull and pick and grab the glass in different ways. And then these are our tonged or teeth tweezers. Um, these help you pick up the glass off the table and give you a nice grip on the glass. Great. Over here is gonna be our graphite uh, tools. We have the flat graphite paddle and then the reamer. Both can be used to shape the glass in different ways or hold the glass as 
um, a way to protect the heat and not pull too much heat from the glass. Um, you can get all different types of graphite paddles and different shapes and sizes. We have our like kind of spherical and then the flat graphite paddle here. Can these be used in the flame? So the graphite paddles and the stainless steel metal tools should never be used in the flame. The graphite paddles, not as crazy to put them in the flame, but you can just like mess it up and they can be expensive tools. So you don't want to mess them up by putting them directly into the torch. If you do put the metal into the torch, glass and metal heat up chemically similarly. And so you don't want them to heat up together or else they'll stick to each other. And then that can potentially permanently damage your tools. So you wanna make sure when you use these tools, you heat up the glass in the flame, bring them out of the flame and then use the tools. And then next we have our rod rest. This basically holds your glass up while you're working. Oh, that's um, nice. It keeps the heat away from you. And then you can also have a sort of direction on which side of the glass is hot. So the hot end will always go on the top part here, it. just so it's not um, close to you and you don't risk touching it, brushing your elbow against it or picking up the wrong side. That makes sense. Um, next, we have our glass of water or a cup of water. It's in a can. Um, if you are panicking or make something that you want to get rid of or just have any sort of discarded glass that you don't want on the table, which there should never be discarded glass on the table, you put it in the glass of water. So you just take the hot glass and you can just exactly. pop it in there. Exactly. And okay. you leave it there, let it cool off. You don't want to dip it in and immediately pull it off because it's going to crack. If you dip it in and immediately pull it out, it could crack and break out into the surface. It could get on your clothes, it could get on your face. So you just wanna be careful, leave it in the cup of water for at least a few minutes. Okay. And All then right. next we have another rod rest. This is helpful when you're making glass um, sculptures and you're not working on something, but you wanna keep it straight up so that it's not just resting on the table. You can rest the glass into the wooden rod while it holds your sculpture while you're working on other bits and pieces of the sculpture. All right. Great. Yeah. Thank you, Anna. Thank you. Let's get your torch set up. Great. So to start, we always want to follow the acronym POOP. And that means that we're gonna open the propane first, that's the P, then we open oxygen, O, and we turn it off, we go opposite, O, P. So we open up our propane. We have a map gas torch here, and we'll light the torch, and now it's on. All right. Reduce our propane just slightly, and open that up. We wanna make sure that we have a tight cone here. Um, this is the hottest part of the flame. If it is too faint like that, it's not going to be hot enough to melt your glass. Okay. This will also make sure that you have nice directional heat to melt all of your rods. Great, thank you. You're very welcome. Hey, Rebecca. Oh, hey, Andrew. How's the setup going for the class? It's going great. Yeah, we're going to be doing, doing some fusing and slumping today. Amazing. And I see some, what are these different glass samples you've got here? Yeah, so we have some different colors of um, bullseye sheet glass here, which is um, a company out of Portland that makes all the glass for fusing, slumping, and casting. Amazing. So was this a piece here? Uh, fused or slumped? It was both. So first, 
I cut straight strips of glass and fused them into a flat sheet. And then I put that over a form and slumped it down onto that. Okay, and so this is all um, going into the kiln, um, and that's d done in two steps or one step? Yeah, so the first step is to make sure that all the pieces of the glass are fused to each other, which means that we're cutting up pieces, placing them next to each other, and putting them into a kiln. So here's an example of a piece that I've fused flat. Ah, okay. So they, they really merge a little bit into each other and connect. Yeah, they really do. So this, this glass has been fired to a temperature, I think 1490 degrees Fahrenheit, is the temperature at which this fuses together. Okay. And that's called a full fuse. Okay. And you're, you're just um, breaking the glass and putting it next to each other? Or what, what, how are you kind of assembling this? These look yeah. like they fit really nicely. Thank you. Um, I'll, show you how, I'll show you how to cut the glass. Uh, glass wants to be six millimeters thick. So we have these sheets are three millimeters. So we're going to be working on creating a stack uh, two layers thick for a total of six millimeters. Okay, so th three millimeters and three millimeters. Yes. So they'll be on top of each other. Exactly. All right, you want to see how to cut some glass? Yeah. So I'll have my piece here. I have a few tools. I have a Sharpie. I have a straight edge, safety glasses, of course. All right. um, I have my glass cutter and my running pliers. Look at that. So these are just regular pliers, but they have a sort of a, a slight curvature here. They do. They have a slight curve. So what What's going to happen is I'm going to use my glass cutter, which is really just a wheel, a diamond-tipped wheel, and I'm going to use that diamond tip to create a score, which is just a line of tension in the glass. And where that score is, then I'm going to take my running pliers and apply a little pressure to the score. And because of the curve of the pliers, there's pressure on the left and the right. It's going to snap. Great. OK, so you know if I'm working on a straight line, I'll just make a mark, let's say, in the center. So there's a few different ways you can do it. You can draw a line and remove the straight edge and then sort of freehand it. Or I like to use the straight edge to kind of press against. You just, when you line up the glass cutter, you want to make sure that the side that has a screw is facing up. Hold a bit like a pencil. You want it to be pretty vertical, not entirely vertical, but pretty close to vertical, um, so that all the pressure is going straight into that uh, wheel. And then if I line it up against the straight edge, I notice that the wheel is kind of off center from my line, so I'm just going to move my straight edge over mm -hmm. a hair. And then it's more pressure than you think, and you want to hear a really nice scratching sound. Great. Okay. You want consistent pressure from start to finish. You can only go in one direction, and you can really only do it once. So if you mess up, unfortunately, that's that. Yeah. So then I'm going to take my running pliers, making sure that uh, this side with the set screw is facing up. So the curvature is down, like like a, a mound. Exactly. And or then frown. I I line it up directly to the center of my running pliers. And I don't do it right at the edge, though now at this point I can't remember why, but I put it in a little bit further. Mm -hmm. Lift it up, snap. Oh, look at that. Two pieces. Perfect. Yeah, thank you. All right. And then um, I'm assuming you do some cuts on this, you make your composition, mm -hmm. and then we put them on the shelf and we fire them at the specific temperatures. Yes. So we have here some paper from Bullseye. It's called Thin Fire. And it's going to go on the kiln shelf um, under the glass, and it's going to oh. make sure that the glass does not fuse directly to the shelf. Oh, because it would stick to this otherwise yeah, it as would it stick. melts. Mm -hmm. And this uh, is just a one-use material. So once it's fired, it sort of turns into powder. Great. So students can make their pieces and then put a piece of that paper down yep. and then hop their pieces over to this, and then we'll just set them in the, the kiln. Mm -hmm. Great. Yeah, there's a, you know, we could get into a lot of specifics about how the glass moves and flows at different temperatures, but I think if you're interested, I would direct you to the heat and glass bullseye tech sheet, it's tech notes four. Uh, bullseye is also a resource center and um, scientific research facility, so they publish a lot of information on how their glass 
flows and moves at different temperatures. Great. Um, I, I bet the class is going to be excellent. This looks really fun. Thank you. To think, just a few hours ago, I knew almost nothing about glass. The processes for manipulating it, the tools of the trade, none of it. It's almost like I've spent my life looking through instead of looking at this mesmerizing material. Well, my students are happy, and I certainly feel that my glass is half full.